happened what always happens the big shots the police the government official religious leaders exploit the people for such an extent that they but protest mob lynching oppression of dalits sex scandals rapes farmers issues ever rising of petrol and diesel price etc are some of the reason for such protest that's quite offensive but do they really protest because as far as my experience tells me and what media projects is that the forces of law and order swing into action to suppress their voices and they are back again to their business as usual it seems to me only a game political game for just vote banking all are same a genuine leader and leadership is not to be seen at all in today's world what do you mean by that what do you expect then a real revolution revolution or no let it at least be real i'm getting fed up of all this artificiality and counterfeit all over the place are you trying to indicate that they were not sincere in what they said and did i'll have you know that some of them went to jail risk their careers and their lives they were quite sincere as far as they went no doubt on that score but i feel they were just incapable of standing up for any more worthwhile and less selfish cause you are quite a cynic aren't you no i'm a realist and real thing makes me mad okay well you think you know everything then why don't you take over the show then and let us see what you have to offer us okay but it's not that i know everything i'm just a common man i happen to know a simple man and i am sure you also know him he was an involuntary prophet in today's context you may call him an involuntary leader but determined and dedicated to god's call he too faced many challenges in carrying out god's message but he endured them all he was a true leader anyway it's better to begin the play than my homily
Sing aloud to God our strength. Shout joy to the God of Jacob. Raise a song, sound the timbrel, the sweet lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our feast day. Jeremiah, in case you didn't know, man whom this play is all about. He is praying, or to be more precise, he is reciting psalms. I heard a voice I had not known. I relieved your shoulder of the burden. Your hands were freed from the chains. Jeremiah is referring to the liberation of his people from slavery in Egypt, in case you don't know. And I might add, Jeremiah is deeply religious because he is a son of a Jewish priest. I heard a voice I had not known. I relieved your shoulder of the burden. Jeremiah. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Jeremiah, you deaf for something? Jeremiah, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac, the God of my people. Israel. That's what I thought it was. Jeremiah, I have chosen you. Me? Lord, please, some other time. I mean, I'm trying to pray. If only people who prayed would talk less and listen more. Listen? I don't know anything about listening. I went to a good religious school wherein I learned all about prayer. Prayer is raising your mind and heart to God. It is singing your praises, adoring you, loving you, thanking you, begging for pardon and of course asking for favors. Nothing about listening. Now. Uh, Please, uh, let me pray. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Jeremiah, uh, you are beginning to test me. Lord, will you please get 
get off my back i mean you are infinite i am finite you are infallible i am so weak you are all powerful i can hardly say my prayers straight so will you please pick on someone your own size <laughs> in a sense you could say i can't help it and in another sense you are of my size what what's that again it is that i just can't get you or any of your kind off my mind jeremiah man is my most cherished possession and the apple of my eye and you are capable of freedom and love you can organize and look after things that makes you of my size if you get what i mean i don't lord i don't and if you love us so much how come everything is such a bloody mess uh, excuse my language that's a nice thing to say did i not lead you out of slavery into the promised land and give you guidelines to uh you mean the 10 commandments yes i reminded you when you began to drift off the path into selfishness and slavery once again you didn't listen you ran after false freedoms and gods that are slave you land yourself in the mud and then you say why did you get us into this mess logic but surely lord you could have prevented us from doing it no jeremiah not that way you see i am the god of freedom of true freedom i fought for your freedom i freed you from slavery and i want you to remain free but freely i sent my prophets to speak to you and each of them just like you tried to chicken out admit you are wrong admit that you have found neither freedom nor joy in all these turn back and take path that i have always suggested that of justice love and peace wait a minute wait a minute lord it's beginning to sound like you have chosen me as your next prophet or something right first time but lord you can't be serious i mean i'm no good at all this fiery thundering preaching and all that stuff and uh, what's wrong with just wanting to settle down you know peacefully and uh, this whole prophet business is an awfully dangerous thing i could get hurt or even killed jeremiah i will be with you yeah 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 maybe but i bet you won't stop me from getting hurt for instance if i were to say yes mind you i'm not saying yes i'm just saying if for argument's sake if i were to say yes if i were to say yes what would my orders be hmm? simple call the people to a change of heart to living by justice and honesty to stop oppressing the poor and the weak and the stranger to begin with speak to the people who are going to offer sacrifice in the temple and then speak to king zedekiah king speak to king i mean just like that go to the temple in the full view of the priests and prophets and tell them that they are all a bunch of hypocrites and then 
coolly stroll into the palace and say, Oh, hi, King Zedekiah, it's me. I'm the latest prophet you see. And I have been told to tell you that your whole government is full of exploitation. Something like that. Though I am sure you could be able to improve on the style somewhat. But damn it, Lord, this is just like the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Lord, do you hear me? Lord. 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 Don't chicken out on me now. I did not say yes. I made no commitment. Lord, you heard me. Y'all are witnesses. Y'all heard the conversation. I did not say yes, did I? Well, I don't know. You better leave us out of it. I'm sorry, Jeremiah. We are not really supposed to be an active part of this play. We are just common men. Cherry, there you are. Where have you been? Miriam has been asking for you. Really? Wait till you hear what just happened. Something horrible and terrible just happened. You have to listen. Relax, Jerry. Relax. I thought that the only thing that could happen to you, which you would call terrible, would be splitting with Miriam. That's true. But wait till you hear this. Are you going to explain to the people just who this is? Don't you believe in introduction? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm new at this job though. Anyway, as you have probably guessed, this is Uriah, Jeremiah's bosom friend, as you might say. Thick as thieves, inseparables like David and Jonathan and all that sort of thing. Just like that, one minute he was there bugging me and the next minute, poof, he just disappeared. I tell you, he tricked me into the semblance of saying yes and then he just disappeared. Of all the dirtiest and cheapest tricks in the world, so, he didn't exactly command you. No, he didn't. And you didn't exactly say yes. No, I didn't. I didn't say yes. I didn't say yes. I didn't say yes. I tell you, I never... Okay, I... okay. But he just asked you. That's right. He that means asked. it's up to you, Jerry. You're right. It's up to me. Yeah? But I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Oh, oh, Yuri, you're my best friend. We share everything. You have to help me. Please tell me what to do. What to do? Gut level. Tune into yourself. Gut level. Ask yourself. Deep down, what you want to do. Deep down, in your deepest self. And you will know, you will always know. And for a sign, your choice will be followed by a deep down joy. But don't rush to anything, my friend. Take your time. It will become clear sooner or later. Just be open. Meanwhile, Miriam has been asking for you. She may be coming at any time. Thanks, Yuri. Somehow, you've made me feel calm again. You're a real friend. You Thanks. too, Jerry. See you later. I'll take leave.
that's Miriam, Jeremiah's fiancé, who Jeremiah lovingly calls Mary. That's her dad, Joram, the priest. And mother, Ruth. And that's her kid brother, Tobias. Very pious family. One of the best. Jeremiah's too. One of those made for each other. Miriam's family approve of Jeremiah. They were ready to give their daughter's hand in marriage. about sharing one's dreams and fears. So tell me, Jerry. Well, actually, 
I was um, wondering. Wondering what, Jerry? Um, suppose uh, the Lord God were to ask me or you uh, to do something that would make it uh, fully difficult to continue loving each other. Oh, Jerry, there you go again on your idealistic trip. I I'm not married. Don't you understand? Understand what, Jerry? Every time you go about, got to do something about the world, mess the world is in. Don't tell me you have begun to link it with the will of the Lord. Well, suppose I were to say that I have. Jerry, what's the matter with you? Why can't you be like everyone else? I don't want to be like everyone else. Surely, life has something more to offer than just that. That's such an awful thing to say, Jerry. I thought you loved me. I do love you, Mary. I really do. I love you more than, uh, more than, uh, more than words can say. More than words can say? I believe that you do love me, Jerry. And yet you can't find the words to say it in. How do you plan to change the world if you do not find the words to say anything important? Well, if it is the Lord who is calling me to speak out against injustice, He will help me find the words. Let's be realistic, Jerry. Yes, but surely life has something more to offer than the age-old alternatives of soulless traditions and empty rebellion. Jerry, I still don't know what you're talking about. Oh, Mary, you can't deny that everything is such an awful mess. Our promised land was supposed to be a land of freedom, love, justice and peace. A land which would welcome the refugee and the migrant. But look at it now. Selfishness and exploitation everywhere. The rich get richer and only build big statues. The poor get poorer. The pleasure of the few is built on the misery of millions. Freedom is a luxury only for the elite few. And our religion and our religious leaders are as sick and dead as our politics and our politicians. But everyone knows that, Jerry. That is stale news. And that is going to remain the same no, way. No, that's not true. It can't be. One day, someday, things will be different. On that day. What day? Which day? At any rate, certainly not in our time. May maybe not in our time, but at least we can try and speed up that day a bit. Oh, Jerry, you think too much. That's the problem with you. Mary, as you say, everybody knows that things aren't the way that they are supposed to. But all they do is either accept things the way they are, or they say that nothing can be done about it anyway. Or some few of them will make some radical noises for a short while. And then they simply surrender. But surely, man is more than just that. He must not merely survive. He must prevail. We make our own world, not let it make us. I don't understand all this philosophying of yours, Jerry. I'm a simple village girl with more practical cares and duties to think of. But, but what about value? What about meaning in life? Value? Meaning? What about us? Isn't there value or meaning for life in it? I've had enough, Jerry. I'm leaving. Uh, 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 no, no, please, please don't go. Don't stop me, Jerry. I'm going. Bye. Uh, 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 Mary, uh, uh, I'll uh, see you in the evening. Perhaps. Damn it, Lord! This is all your fault! You, you encourage me in all of this nonsense and mess up my whole life. Can't you make things simple?
Are you thinking what I am thinking? You took the words right out of my mouth. Those words he said. Yeah, hits you right between the eyes. Soulless tradition and empty rebellion. That is us, both of us. Yes, both of us and both alternatives. Yes. Deep down, both of us. We are the same and deep down, both of us. We are shallow. Begun our press already. We have no time left for you, sir. Standing in the rain, knocking at the window, knocking at the windows, try to rain. Standing in the rain, knocking at the window, knocking at the windows, try to If he's fair skinned and not brown, sir. Standing in the rain, knocking at the window, knocking at the window, try to pray. Standing in the rain, knocking at the window, knocking at the window, try to pray.
Turn away from your sins. Take good care of the poor. Repent. I'm sorry, Mary, but it kept bugging me. I had to do it. Jerry, you're making a fool of yourself, of me, my family. What will your father say when he gets back? My father? Well, he always told me to do the will of the Lord. And this is the God's will to make a fool of yourself? Uh, no. Yuri, please talk some sense into him. Jerry, what is this? Is this some kind of joke? But Yuri, remember you told me? You don't have to do this. Of course not, not me. But Yuri, you told me to listen to what I wanted to do deep down, gut level, remember? Well, these past few days, I've been doing a lot of thinking and listening. And now I know it is God who's calling me to do this. And remember, you said if I was on the right track, I would feel a quiet joy in it all. Uh, well, I'm feeling that right now, Yuri. Well, Jerry, what can I say? If you are sure that this is what you want deep down? Yuri, please tell him to be sensible. Yes, Yuri, it really is. I know that deep down this is what I have to do. And, and you find a deep joy in it all? Yes, Yuri, I really do. I really do. Then. There is nothing I can do about it. I am sorry, Miriam. I am really sorry. Yuri, I thought you were my friend. All you men are the same. Disgusting. Mary, stop! Wait, you are coming. All of us are coming. <laughs> Jerry, I know that you will have a problem explaining this to Miriam. But somehow I will. Uh, but anyway, later. Now, I have work to do. Personally, I think this is the craziest thing that I have ever seen. But I will stand with you, whatever happens. Thanks, Yuri. You're a real friend. I don't know what to say. Forget, Jerry. Oh, here comes the trouble. Jeremiah, son of Belshazzar, and priest of Anathoth, I demand that you tell us in God's name what business you have here. Mm -hmm. In this holy temple garden, Ananias, priest of our city, know this that all the world is holy, but this is one of the least holy places because it has become a means of oppressing the people 
under the blasphemous cloak of his holy name. Jeremiah! Beware, Jeremiah! You are saying to yourself the language and the manner of your prophets! Thus says the Lord, I am the Lord of the poor and the oppressed. I brought you to this land, a great one and a rich land, the promised land of freedom. But alas, you have made it a land of slavery and oppression, a land of injustice and exploitation. Far worse than the land I rescued you from. And even worse, you worship gods of slavery and bondage. That's a lie. We worship none but the God of our fathers in his holy temple. None but his holy Do you turn him here? Oh, and who is the God you worship the rest of the time? <laughs> Here, you worship Yahweh, or so you think. And everywhere else, the rest of the time, you worship money, power, wealth, and your own selves. Idolaters you are, all of you! Do you think the Lord is deceived? I cannot hear the sound of your fine hymns, says the Lord, because the cries of the widow and the orphan drowns them out. But Jeremiah, it is hardly us who have caused these things. Yes, Prince Daniel, but you are part of the system which encourages and permits these things. And so, you are to blame for it too. And if you claim that you are unaware of these things, then it is a crime of severe neglect and irresponsibility. A moment. <coughs> there is no need for anyone to listen to you, Jeremiah. You have no credentials to speak to us. You are free to become a wandering prophet if you wish. <laughs> Listen to me, all you professional prophets of Israel. I am not a prophet like any of you, nor am I the son of a prophet. I did not aspire to this role. But it was the Lord himself who called me to this. It is he who charged me with this task and asked me to speak it here. Here? Right here? In this court? Blaspheming this holy place? The Lord would not ask you to obstruct the temple service. It is not I who obstruct the temple services. You priests and prophets! You pay meticulous attention to the rules of ritual and sacrifice while you ignore the precepts of justice and honesty. Idolaters and blasphemers you are, all of you. Thus says the Lord. <coughs> Just a minute, Jeremiah. It says in the Lord's law that the testimony of one will not stand. Who else will bear witness along with you and authenticate your words? I shall stand witness for Jeremiah's words. You? By what authority? We don't even know who you are. Then that's your problem. You wanted me to have a second? Very well then, here he is, Uriah, son of Nicanor, and an excellent man indeed. Thanks, Uriah. No, for Uriah, 
son of Nicanor, that you have taken on yourself a very serious responsibility. I know what I have done and I accept the consequences. How can you bear witness to what Jeremiah says? Oh, were you present when he received his communication? I received the same message deep in my heart. And I knew it was the Lord who spoke. Only I did not have the courage to speak out his words. Listen, you people, you are all the Lord's witnesses. Is there a single one among you who has not been stirred from deep within against all the miseries and oppression of the poor? And have you all not heard the voice of the Lord deep within, urging you to do something, to say something against this evil thing? And have you all not, like me, suppressed it until Jeremiah spoke out? He the one, sincere and courageous one, of a soul. Silence! That's enough! You have gone too far, Jeremiah and Uriah. First, you claim the power of the Lord and disturb the sacred assembly. Then, you insult the anointed ministers and override the authority of their words. Next, you willfully dishonor this holy temple. And finally, you utter words of alarm to upset and terrorize the people. May Lord's own punishment come down upon you for what you have done. We have but done what the Lord has asked us to do. Let him be our judge. Depart, you people! Be gone! Long enough you have stood here silent. But the Lord's holy place and his ordained ministers were insulted in your face. There is no holy sacrifice today! But Jeremiah's words ring true, and there is much truth in them. What disobedience is this? Prince Daniel, do you dare to question what the sacred authorities have decreed? Go at once, all of you. Go! Let Lord's own displeasure fall on you all. Go! Go! What about the meeting with King Zedekiah and his court? I suppose Prince Daniel will be able to arrange it without much difficulty. Don't worry, my friend. Leave it to me. I will come with you and I will speak to Prince Daniel. Thanks, Yuri. I couldn't have done this without you. You're a real friend. No, Yuri. No, Jerry. You are the real man in all this. I am just a sidekick. Well, so long. Wish me luck. Thanks. Jeremiah was very firm and bold in delivering God's message, wasn't he? Yes, and Uriah too. 
He stood by Jeremiah, a friend in need is a friend indeed. That's very true. But what is next now? Prince Daniel manages to have Jeremiah and Uriah to speak in the royal court of King Zedekiah, a kind king and Queen Nefretary, just the opposite. But, my love, democracy is a sign of strength. Bullshit! No, my love, you should not speak like that. I am the queen. Nobody tells me what to do and what not to do. Not even you. No, my love, I mean... Yes, my love... I Very specially you. Since you think it fit to listen to every mad man who wants to let off steam in your palace, your milk. Thank you. How many times must I tell you not to be polite to servants? It gives them wrong ideas about themselves. But my darling, it's, they are the fellow human beings and the law of Moses. Law of Moses? Moses is an old daughter and he is dead. His ideas are pretty cracked and outdated. Please, darling, you should not speak like that. Are you trying to command me? Me? Command you? I am dumb. But Moses is a prophet. Prophet and so is Jeremiah. Superstitious nonsense for empty minds and hearts. King Zedekiah, you are the king here. Conduct yourself like a king. Hold your shoulders back and throw out your chest. Let's go to the court. Darling. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel. Does your Lord not believe in the etiquettes of court? Please, darling, let's have the Lord's message. And hurry up. We have a busy schedule ahead. Let the Gentile lady know that there are other etiquettes higher than that of earthly courts. Gentile? Did you call me you beggars? Please, darling. Gentile is only a sociological term. No negative connotations at all. Please sit down. Now, you may speak, Jeremiah. I will speak but not at your favor. I speak because it is the Lord who bids me to speak. And the Lord is above all lords and nations. Yes, yes, of course, of course. But that's not what you wish to tell us. No. Thus speaks the Lord. How long? How long, O oh king, will you and your people persist in their folly, injustice and sins? I did not set my people free from foreign bondage to deliver them into your inhuman clutches. Beware, beware, O oh Israel, lest I deliver you all from king 
to lowest citizen to cruel death and enslavement in a foreign land time is running out time is running out in a little while i will be using nebuchadnezzar king of babylon as my instrument to punish you all thus speaks the lord i am the god of justice but also of love i am slow to anger and quick to forgive i desire not the death of the sinner rather that he be converted but if you refuse to be converted then all of you shall surely die what must we do noble prophet of the most high prince daniel mend your ways be true shepherds of the flock take good care of the poor do not prey upon their pittance do not drink up their blood and build your wealth upon their lives enough we have heard your message jeremiah you repeat yourself be gone you miserable peasants both of you we have accorded you the etiquettes of court which is too good for the likes of you why do you linger you have spoken your stupid message now be gone yes yes see we have heard your message now the lord cannot deny that now please go and the pray lord. for me uh, i mean all of us the lord has spoken now it is for you to act the impudence of the man thinks no end of himself he has spoken and we shall act yes we shall act but not the action he expects but darling if we kill him we will bring the curse of the lord almighty on our heads kill him kill him and make him a martyr for some stupid cult group to defy no no that is not what i have in my mind his friend uriah jeremiah will be unable to stand alone bring his support down and he will fall with him too now that's what i call politics well done samaya we have noted your potential for the wise counsel enough court to action but darling please darling listen shut to up lang I must warn Jeremiah, especially about the conspiracies of the Egyptian woman. We must be very careful about Daniel and others. They seem to be in league with Jeremiah and Uriah. Stage a coup and make it flop. Yes. Then implicate them as the ringleaders. Oh. Abu Al. Don't discuss plans while they are around. Oh, that's politics. A dirty business. Be that as it may. The end of part 1. Jeremiah destroys the establishment. Next comes part 2. The establishment destroys Jeremiah.
I heal from is shown in the best. And if you ask me why, I will tell you right now. My country is the best cause we've got on our side. No politics. For so I've been told And the politicians all Take bribes all the time They swindle and steal And exploit the poor But it's perfectly alright Cause God's on their side In Maryland the Catholics And Protestants fight They slaughter each other No killing the Hindus and Muslims will sometimes But it's perfectly alright Cause God's on our side Now I've sung for you This song of a meaningless life They say it will have meaning When God's on my side but I don't think it matters I don't think it cares I just have to manage No thoughts on my side I just have to manage No thoughts on my side again hello jerry you okay i guess so i spoke to my parents we've been storming at each other ever since that speech of yours at the temple but we've begun to listen to each other and have begun to reach some kind of solution jerry i'm to go away for a while a away but where? What for? How long? To Egypt. The caravan leaves tomorrow night. I'll be back with them in 11 months. I think I agree with mom and dad. I must be away from you for some time in a different setting. It will help me see things more clearly. And when I return, if my answer is still a yes for you. They will not oppose us anymore. Oh, oh, Mary, you give me life and kill me in the same breath. You say your answer is yes now, but we have to wait 11 months to see what it will be then. Jerry, I love you. I know that my answer would be a yes even then. You must trust me, Jerry. I do trust you, Mary. I really do. But 11 months is so long. So much could happen. Jerry, this is our chance to prove to everyone that our love is for real. Remember, many waters cannot drown love. That's true. Many waters cannot drown love. I know. No, no. I'll be back and won't have changed. P please, Mary, Mary, don't go. Don't try to stop me. Eleven months and uh, then. Please. Goodbye, Jerry. Mary, please. No. Oh, no. No. This is too much, Lord. This is too much. You can't ask me this. I. Toby, please uh, have a good time in Egypt. Take 
care of your sister for me i will jerry i'll not forget you i'll bring her back to you <laughs> this is too much this is too much lord you can't ask me of this you can't ask me this <laughs> I don't know what to say. Me neither. It's shame, a dirty, rotten shame. I mean, it's not Jeremiah's situation that's upsetting me. It's. I know. It's our bogus involvement, both of ours, kind of hits you in the face. I have got a lot of fundamental rethinking to do. Me too. N never thought I would be able to look myself in the face so deep down. Kind of hard to remain neutral in the face of all this. But will we be strong enough to do something? anything or by tomorrow be back to our rationalizing and hesitations jerry jerry we have got to be very careful the plot is thickening the high priest and the boss prophet you know ananiah and semaiah abetted and aided by that gentile woman have passed a death sentence as it were what about us you will take over from us if we get eliminated who us are you serious this sort of thing is hardly our line then you aren't converted at all see what i mean It's all a failure. Nobody even listened. No, Jerry. That is not true. Sorry. A life is success if you use it to do what deep down you know you have to do. Whether people agree with you or accept what you say. is quiet beside the point i think jerry <coughs> i believe that every one of us have something unique to do and say in our lives and this is to be found out by responding to the world we live in and not in isolation from it jerry you and i in dialogue with the world with each other and with god have found out what it is we must say and do in our actions you have become you and i have become me in doing what it is from the depth of us we have been born to do and that is success even if nobody accepts us or even listens to us ever yes even then now listen to me this is our last chance to get our messages over to the last detail before they remove us one more meeting with king sadakiah and his court and since the priest 
and the prophets are there we will be killing two birds with one stone except it will be us who are going to be killed two sitting ducks aren't we just the onlookers even though the world is in need of great help yes you are right fundamentally we are the same no change uninvolved well intention to big talks bombastic words leaving us still uninvolved but darling they are not my friends they are the emissaries of yahweh well let's get it over with bring in the prophets bring them in thus says the lord the god of israel and since when shut up you audacious gentile and sit down until you are told otherwise now hear this o israel thus speaks yahweh you have rejected my warnings and ignored my entreaties now bear the consequences you break the backs of the poor and the aged and tear out of the hands of the widow the few coins she has you force little children to work for long hours for a pittance you steal the lands of the tribes and pillage the bonded laborer you want a land of slavery and oppression very well then you will have it know this that very soon the king of babylon will attack and destroy you utterly even the temple of the lord will not be spared thus says the lord i do not need any mountains of wood and stone to shelter me it is i who have built the temple of the universe to shelter you wait a minute do you forget Lord and I have the credentials to prophesy in this land which is something that cannot be said of you we received our credentials directly from God which is something that cannot be said of you Samaya be that as it may now I shall prophesy thus says the Lord Do not be afraid to stand firm against the Lord of Babylon for I am with you we are not his horses and his chariots have I not delivered you from far superior forces even from the power of mighty Egypt so too will I fight for you against the pagan hordes of Nebuchadnezzar thus says the lord so jeremiah and uriah what do you say to that i feel sorry for you semaya and even sorrier for our people who will have to suffer because of you you know as well as i that it was not the lord who delivered this message to you but your own selfish ambition you carry favor with the court especially the gentile queen 
and because of the sake of your own selfish interest you will lead all our people to misery and death blasphemy lawyer law is going to punish you we will have you arrested and be killed defeated alarmist anti national unpatriotic and disturbers of peace and spies of nebuchad nazar your majesty i am sure they are in the pay of the king of babylon sent here to make us surrender without a fight Enough! Enough! Get these spies immediately out of my sight. I believe Jeremiah and Uriah. I care not who says otherwise. Now we shall decide, democratic like, on whose counsel we shall follow. Does anyone not vote that we shall follow the message of the Lord? given to us by his prophet semaya to do battle against the enemy to defend our lands and families against the aggressor all in favor of semaya and his counsel raise your hands it is resolved then daniel your opposition is noted and we recognize your democratic right to oppose us we will now take counsel with the priests and the prophet as to how to offer sacrifice to the lord so that he may side with us in the battle daniel <coughs> the sacrifice yes but just one victim uriah him dead and jeremiah will be a broken man we shall arrest him too but of course uriah's death must be an accident no No, we cannot do that, darling. It's dangerous to harm the chosen of the Lord. Yes, you have more feelings for these unpatriotic and threatening spies of Babylon than for your poor wife. When they attacked me and insulted me in public, you spoke not a word in my favor. But, darling, I didn't realize that you were feeling afraid or defenseless. Darling, darling, please listen. Uriah is to be killed. Yes, yes. Say, ran over by a speeding chariot? Oh. That can easily be arranged, my lord. But I think this Jeremiah needs more complex treatment. Yes. He must be removed for a while and kept in a safe and secure place. Yes. Then we will announce Uriah's death. When he is completely broken we will let him go and do whatever he pleases but suppose he stubbornly refuses to be broken by Uriah's uh, uh, removal there is always that possibility very well then we have to eliminate him in that eventuality we cannot have him go around preaching submission and resignation to never get the sun uh i just thought of something there is this used to well in my father's old property it is quite abandoned and nobody uses it anymore it should have about 3 to 4 feet of mud in it and there is no way out and a couple of days in the sting death will surely break his spirit an excellent idea now let's do business but make sure that he doesn't recognize you are your servants agreed
why is it that i still cannot make a definite commitment me neither there is something in me that holds me back you wouldn't believe it i have reread all the key writings of sigmund freud this past week to try and find out what holds me back and i still don't know and until we understand ourselves first there is not much sense in rushing into this thing you know what i mean otherwise it's kind of hypocrisy yes maybe we are cowards at least we aren't hypocrites that sounds great anyway we have resolved in your best interests to protect your moral sense by seeing to it that all scenes of violence are kept off stage which means we are going to have to jump over a bit of unpleasant scenes and events it's okay jeremiah you can take off your cloak now we are in the city now thanks daniel my god this bath and change of clothes feels so good after that filthy cistern i was there just 3 days but it felt like a month ha anyway um, where's yuri uh, you told me that he would be here he's not coming tell me tell me prince daniel the truth i want the truth i can handle it yuri and i talked about this he's dead isn't he tell me jeremiah i want the uriah but he refused to take any extra precautions i had a bodyguard following him everywhere against his will jehu the bodyguard was also killed while trying to save uriah from the speeding wheels no you jeremiah i'm sorry yuri please stand you i thank you you have done more than a loyal friend and could do i thank you sincerely for yuri and for me now please leave me alone jeremiah no please please just just leave me alone just leave me alone cheated lord cheated by you yuri is dead the bravest noblest and kindest friend 
no man could have ever asked for and he is gone because of you was there really nothing you could have done to save him nothing you and your things about freedom easy for you to talk cold and aloof sitting up there in the clouds speaking about fine principles to live by you know we take you a lot more seriously if you were to come down here and try it out for a while live by decent principles your principles speak out against injustice as you read it as i am trying to do then if you can practice what you've been preaching then we'll believe you i know how you feel jerry no you don't you don't lord so don't even try until you come down here and try it out you'll never understand perhaps jerry you would be surprised if you only knew what's going to happen after some centuries from now i don't understand lord i never will so don't even try to explain how do i even know this is you how do i even know that this whole profit business is not just my imagination i guess it's a question of faith jerry faith you mean blind faith faith is not blind jerry it's another way of seeing like love faith and love enable you to see what people who do not believe and cannot love are unable to see which necessitates another jump across quite a sizable bit of time yep the whole siege of jerusalem awfully grisly business even by usual siege standards people starving to death and eating dead bodies and so on plague and pestilence all of which could have been avoided had they surrendered to nebuchadnezzar's army peaceable like which as you remember what jeremiah had advised on lord's behalf anyway we couldn't possibly have shown all that blood and go on stage we must clean up the media too much violence and scandals yo we are at the court of king nabuchadnezzar of babylon and his wife queen dorcas they have set up a temporary residence near jerusalem or rather what is left of it hasn't been a pleasant business at all the stubborn people resisted us to the very last even when their cause was hopeless we had little will to attack judah at the first place but 
secret treaties and alliances she was building up with our enemies, especially with Egypt, forced our hands. And they have only their leaders to blame. A people always gets the leaders he deserves. A sage has written, my lord. Anyway, we shall leave behind this land the tillers of the soil, the wine dresses, and their families. Into Babylon shall we lead all the artisans, the nobles, and the musicians to put themselves of Babylon, the new and the mighty empire. We also have heard that these people have a holy man named Jeremiah who seeks audience with us and it's our resolve to hear him with the respect and dignity. Bring in the Hebrew prophet. Speak what you have to say, Jeremiah. Thus speaks the Lord, the God of Israel, the Lord of all the nations. Listen, my people Israel, had you listened to my words when I called upon you to repair the structures of injustice, exploitation, and poverty, I would not have delivered you into the hands of the king of Babylon. So, I am to understand it's not the valor of my men, nor their skills in the battle, nor even my military strategy that won for us the war, but only the fact that your God did not side with in the conflict. Please, my lord, do not all nations speak like that when they lose a battle? That's all right, my beloved queen. What else you have to say, Jeremiah? Say it fast. Now hear this, O king, the oracle of the Lord against Babylon. Your mighty empire shall crumble never to rise again. Indeed, a time will come when people will not even know where Babylon once existed. But the name and nation of my people Israel shall never vanish from the face of the earth. Thus says the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, you think your God can choose me and cast me aside just as a parent uses a stick to punish his erring son? Anyway, you are not without certain courage, holy man, and we, Babylon, admire and respect that virtue even in our enemies. Though you have spoken works guilty of death, we shall neither punish you nor even arrest you. You shall not go into captivity in Babylon. And now, be gone, you self-assured and proud holy men, and do not try our patience any longer. With your permission, I will punish and kill this man for having spoken insulting words against you. Not so, Shadra, my noble general. This holy man is sincere and courageous. He hesitates not to speak his mind to one stronger than himself. That he does it with firmness. 
It's not quite without <coughs> dignity and respect. He shall live. As it's my servant's command, I obey. But, my lord, I must add that it annoys me to hear one speak against my lord whom I love and respect. Thank you, noble general. We esteem you the more. One last violent scene we must remove and add it from stage. Come to think of it, the Bible is a rather violent book. Be that as it may, we have come to the final act of the perils of being a prophet. Namely, a violent death. Even a reason most prophets couldn't escape that. Gandhiji, Martin Luther King, and Archbishop Romero, social activist Gauri Lankesh, Narendra Taborkar, Govind Pansari, and Rani Maria. And so it was with Jeremiah. And unless you stomach that possibility, forget about being a prophet. Which I guess worries me. But who killed Jeremiah? The religious authorities or the general of King Nebuchadnezzar's army who seems to be very revengeful at Jeremiah? No idea. But a person with a mask stabbed him in the dark from behind. Jerry is not quite dead yet, but badly injured. Slowly, slowly, don't move. Uh, 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 what happened? Where am I? I found you lying on the road. There was blood. Uh, yes, I live in the house over there. Jerry? I was returning home and somebody stabbed and attacked Jerry? me. Uh, Jerry? Is it? Jerry? Oh, Ma Mary! Oh, you've come back just as you said you would. Oh. Jerry, what have they done to you? I was determined to even return to a lavish land. Tobias, with me. They said you live down here. Am I too late? No, no, Mary. You're not too late. You're not too late. Mary, I, I said and did what I had to. My life is a success. But I think I'm dying now. Jerry, I delayed long enough. I'll marry you now. You'll marry me now? But I'm dying. Jerry, many waters cannot drown love. Not even death. Will you marry me? Yes, I will marry you. Of course I will. Of course I will. Of course I will. Part 1 Jeremiah destroys the establishment. Part 2 The establishment destroys 
Jeremiah. Part three. It's for you to figure it out. Who won?